do you think of my fucking outfit today? Good, huh? The cheapest suit online, but now it's worth a fucking fortune with all these Swarovski crystals on it. It's like a fairy shit all over me. The TARDIS had diarrhea all over my suit. Sparkly diarrhea. And I love that there's a catwalk. Look at this. Hey. Hey. Look at this. Hey. Boy, you all look fucking ugly today. You look great. Welcome. So, um, you know, let the people in. Get them in. Hurry up, get in, because I'm not repeating myself, so hurry up! Yeah, let them in and then we'll shut the doors. It's called being on time, people. Especially you at the back, doctor number 13. You should know better. <laughs> That's what happens when you come in last, right? Um, yeah, we're gonna have a fun afternoon. I'm taking over. I'm just gonna wait till they're done and then they close those doors because I don't like, if you're not in here, you can piss off. Because I don't want people hearing things that I talk about because you all are now my family. Th thank you. You can't have them. They're good, aren't they? I forgot, uh, you all see them? See, they match the inside. I know, I know. Because even though I'm this on the outside, I'm gold and bumpy on the inside. <laughs> so um, it's been a while since I've been back to this particular con, C2E2. So I'm not really sure what, y what you've heard that's happened, stories and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take a vote. We're going to practice for 2020. Well, that went down like a ton of fucking bricks, didn't it? Hurry up and keep, let them in, people. Let them in so we can shut the door and I can begin. I'm not going to start till you let the people in. Let the people in. Come on, if they're late, shut the doors. That's their problem. Then they miss this. Right? You were all on time. <sighs> Please. I just, sorry guys, I, I won't, I don't want to begin until they get everybody in. Sorry. Walk a little faster, people! The, number one, I, I want to pay my attention and my focus to you guys because that's distracting. So, is there someone from the con who can take that under their wing and deal with it, please? Good. Ask the bear. Where is the bear? Oh, hi. Yeah. I'm a cub. You're a bear. Oh, there's a lot of gays in the crowd then, right? Or just a lot of people who know gay things. I'm not gay. No, I'm not gay. I just like... Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. The door is closed. We are by ourselves. So, who hasn't heard the jacuzzi story? I'm going to tell the jacuzzi story. <laughs> Sir, you may want to sit down because it's going to be a while. Are you okay? I don't want you blocking the people behind you though, yeah? So if you can, someone give this gentleman a seat so he can sit down. I know he, he but he's first in line. Don't fuck with the fez. <laughs> Let him be first in line. I got your back, okay? And if anybody doesn't put you first in line, come and see me because I'll stick a high heel up their asshole. <laughs> I'm so excited for today. <laughs> so, um, I live in Palm Springs, California, but I grew up in Aurora and Joliet, Illinois. Thank you. I am a homegrown Chicago boy. Sh Chi town. I used to love coming up for Taste of Chicago. Yeah, 
I never went to any of those booths, but I went to the ones up in North, North Chicago in Gaytown. I love the taste of Chicago. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, um, <laughs> I live in Palm Springs. You all know my husband, Scott. Good. Uh, and Scott and I have this thing where we, uh, you know, it's our own house. We don't have a problem being naked in the house or getting up in the morning. And we can be done with photographs now. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Fuck off. <laughs> thank you. Um, so we, are, uh, uh, we like to walk around the house naked. I get up in the morning. You know, I go make the coffee. I'm naked, right? If you've never had naked coffee, you want to have it, okay? <laughs> And then, you know, Scott will get up and we do our thing. So we don't have a problem with our bodies, all that kind of stuff. So I was in the jacuzzi one uh, late afternoon, early, well, mid-afternoon. And I thought, I'm going to go on um, FaceTime Live, right? I'm going to go live and I'm going to broadcast and tell people what I'm up to. And Because I do that every now and then. I like to talk to everybody when I'm bored and lonely. <laughs> so I'm on the, the, uh, uh, the phone and I'm saying, hey, everybody. You know, uh, it's great to see everyone, a lot coming up, uh, things are happening, it's really great, and uh, you know, I really want to tell everybody about, and all of a sudden I hear behind me, sploosh, and I turn around and there's my husband Scott in the jacuzzi. I'm like, did you just walk behind me while I was live on FaceTime, or Facebook? And he went, uh, well, yeah. I went, wait a minute, I am live on Facebook to like 700 million people. And you walk behind me, and you're naked. And he was like, yeah, so? I'm like, so? So everybody can see you. There's hearts being, you know, flying. People, thumbs up. They're like, whoa, you lucky son of a bitch. I'm like, fuck you. My husband is just naked, live, to the world. And he's sitting there going, it's really warm in here, isn't it? <laughs> the jet's great. I'm like, get the jet out of your ass for a minute. I am, I'm still live when I'm shouting at him. What did you do that for? He's like, well, I just, you know, I just saw Jungle Book. I said, I don't care about Jungle Book. Now everybody knows that you're the king of the swingers. Hello. <laughs> So I was like, oh, I'll get back to you, everybody. I can't believe it. Everyone just saw your dong. Yes. So I thought, that was it. It was done. I'm not going to be embarrassed about it. I'm not going to, you know, have a problem with it. Facebook took it down. In like 20 minutes, it was gone. But thank God to you guys. Yes, because within 20 fucking seconds, it was viral. John Barrowman exposed his husband's appendage on live FaceTime post. I was like, oh my God, this is never going to go away. Cut to, I go back to England a few days later. It's kind of died down. You know, the shit hit the fan. Things were, people were talking about it. I got all these pictures of, you know, with the, the what do you call it, the aubergine and the emo all the different emojis on it. And I'm like, ha, funny. <laughs> but I get to England. I decide when I'm there, I always go to see my in-laws, my mother-in-law, Sheila, and my father-in-law, Sterling. Very English. Okay, get the picture? I'm in the conservatory with Sheila having afternoon tea and sandwiches. And Sterling is in the kitchen making the sandwiches, right? And I'm sitting there and Sheila says to me, John, that's how she talks. John, I got a call from Jackie today. You remember Jackie, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I remember Jackie. You know, Jackie, whose son had the problem with his bowel that had the lady next door who came in every day to clean it up because the parrot was making a mess by flying into it, spreading it all around the house. I'm like, yes, I know Jackie, Sheila. I don't need to know about the parrot spreading shit around the house, okay? She said, well, John, Jackie said to me, Sheila, have you seen the papers today? And I said, no, Jackie, why would I worry about the papers? She said, well, Sheila, Scotty's cock is all over the front page. <laughs> a parrot 
apparently he got his cock out on the internet. I'm drinking tea and I went <laughs> spat. Not the conversation you want to have with your mother-in-law, right? It didn't end there. She went, John. I went, yes, Sheila. While I'm recovering from choking, is it true that Scott got his cock out on internet? And I went, well, actually, it was true, Sheila. It was an accident. She said, well, darling, I do hope you would tell Scotty. Please give him a message from me. I went, yes, I will, Sheila. Please tell him to be to keep his cocky in his pants, please. Just at that moment, Sterling walks out of the kitchen with a handful of sandwiches. He says, I don't see why. Apparently, he's well hung. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to tell you this bit. Um, <laughs> when Scott's parents come to stay with us, right? His dad, who's 93. Aw. <laughs> I'm making coffee. I wear clothes when they're in the house, right? But Scott's dad doesn't. Don't you dare tell him I told you this. <laughs> because I was in the kitchen, and mo most of you have seen our house inside if you follow me on uh, uh, any of the social media, right? If you haven't, you better follow me because I show you lots of things on social media. My husband's cock, for one. Um, uh, and you get to see, I sh you know, I don't mind people seeing the inside of the house because I'm celebrating what you've kind of given me. So I figure you should know what's in there. So. <laughs> except in the drawer to the right of the bed, okay? Um, <laughs> what are you two laughing at? You've got one of those drawers too, don't you, you dirty bitches? <laughs> oh, sorry, your cane doubles at. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I love it. There'll be a parade of children walking out of the door now. <laughs> Parents going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What did that mean, mommy? What did that mean? <laughs> Ask your father. <laughs> <laughs> the father's not leaving. He's like, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm buying you a cane, honey. Um, <laughs> and you know what? It's fucking bedazzled. <laughs> I love this. I'd be like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, ow. <laughs> It's even got a hook in it. You're like, get back here! Or for Scott, let me move that out of the way. Anyway, there you go. <sighs> I digress. I was making coffee. And I was making coffee for myself and Scott. And his parents were staying with us. And they stay in the bedroom that's just down the hall from us, right? Far enough away, but close enough. <laughs> Uncomfortable. I'm in the kitchen making coffee. And literally, I hear... John, could I have a brew? And I went, ah! <sighs> yes. And I tried to pretend like nothing was wrong. <laughs> but my 93-year-old father-in-law, you know what I'm talking about, is standing in front of me with just a towel over his shoulder like something out of the Roman Empire. And everything else is just on the floor. And I'm like trying. <laughs> I'm so trying not to look at it. But you don't know, look at it. It's just like, I, OK, do I can't. I'm, I'm going, what kind of coffee would you like, Sterling? He's like, can I have mine you know, strong? I went, really? <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the ceiling in my own house as he's standing in front of me. And then Scott comes out and goes, morning, daddy. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is normal. And then I'm thinking in my head, oh shit, Sheila's gonna come out of the room next. <laughs> and I had to pull Scott into the pantry because we have a pantry where we like keep all the food and we keep, you know, stuff and Scott and I can have private conversations 
And I walked into the pantry, I dragged him, and I turned on the fan, the fan spinning, and I turned and I said, tell your father to please put some clothes on. He's like, why? We walk around naked. I said, yes, but that's you and I. We're not 93. And I just had the floor waxed last week. I'm going to have to follow him with a never mind. Anyway, so he did. He put the towel around him. But you know what he did? He had one of the shortest towels in history. So he put it around him. And it's just bizarre. Never mind. Welcome to my world. <clears throat> oh, my God. Listen, I'm going to get right to the questions. This man with the fez, because I like to feed off of you. Is that okay? Are you all enjoying yourself? Oh, yay! House lights up! I love it! If you have any questions, can we line people up? Is that okay? There's mics there and mics there. But do me a favor, when you line up, Please sit down on the floor. I know I'll get in trouble for telling you to do that, but I don't give a shit. Sit down on the floor because then people behind you can still see, if that's okay. All right, so there's only four people. It's going to be a short panel, everybody. All right, yes, sir. Okay, I've got two things. Um, overall, uh, any idea at all for uh, uh, Doctor Who? Little, nope, not going to happen? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't produce the show. I'm not the BBC, I played Captain Jack, and it's up to them if they want me to come back. They asked me back, but nobody's asked. Okay, all right, no, I'm, I'm bummed out about that, but that's fine. And overall, what do you, uh, I'd, lo I'd love to, s uh, to uh, uh, see me uh, naked? No, 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 no. I don't, uh, uh, very nice, but no. Uh, <laughs> overall, overall <laughs> I would love to see you uh, sing. To see me what? Sing. S you'd love sing. to see me sing. Sing. Like, uh, like maybe. Or the, you want to hear like, me sing. Like the Beatles or. Beatles? Yeah, the Beatles or. I, really? I like, I like the Smiths. I like, you know, what? I like alternative bands. Okay. Um, any idea? Any idea? A little, like, little, uh, dig? Uh, little, uh. What's the one, um, I'm gonna paint it black. Um, oh yeah, that's uh, the, 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 the uh, Rolling Stones. Yeah, Rolling Stones is good. I, I don't know. I'll think about that. I'm, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag here, and I'm probably okay. not supposed to tell you all this, but you know me. I don't care. <laughs> Deal's done. <laughs> um, I am gonna be doing a new album. Oh good. good. I can't tell you what. I can't tell you. When I can't tell you where it is because we're in the moment of finalizing the deal. Yeah. But it will be available to all parts of the world, so okay. you will have be able to get it over here. Okay. Yeah. So you might have to wait for that. Okay. Okay. But I will take that on board because I do like very different music and alternative yeah. music, and I have a very vast variety of music on my phone. Um, and when people say play something, you know for the mood, I'm like, <laughs> you might want to check it first. Yeah, because it's really probably not what they're into. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank no you, yeah. No problem at all, see ya. Thank you, get out of the man's way. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name's Simone and I'm from the Chicago suburbs. Hi Simone, Hi. sit down. Um, okay. No, you're from the Chicago suburbs, where? Westmont. Westmont, yeah. <laughs> feel sorry for you. Anyway, <laughs> no I'm kidding. <laughs> Who is your favorite Doctor Who villain? Ooh. <laughs> you all say that like I said. Who's your favorite Doctor Who villain? <laughs> oh, so you ask me, but you're not going to reveal it yourself? <laughs> hey, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite Doctor Who villain? So, the silence. Yeah. From the library. Okay. They are. That's it? Yes. All right. Okay. That's kind of dull. <laughs> my favorite Doctor Who villain, I have to choose more than one. It's my fucking show, I'll do what I like. <laughs> my utmost primo favorite to begin with is Davros, okay? Next in line, oh my God, I fell down a hole. Not the first time. <laughs>
That was not planned. <laughs> Pikachu, it's your fault. Um, I, uh, my, so the second would be who Davros is in, con you know, control of. It's the Daleks, right? Yeah. And then it's the Cybermen. Yeah. I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> yes, over here. Oh my God. Hi. Hello. You are so beautiful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So I'm Aaron. I'm from Aaron. Sh yeah. Where are you from? Chicago. Woo. Yeah. You're just so beautiful. I'm so sorry. Like gay You're legend. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Seriously. Thank you. Why are you sorry? I, well, if you're telling me I'm good looking and I'm a gay legend, that's awesome. <laughs> Don't apologize about it. I was saying sorry because I'm actually leaving after this because I have to work. Crew. Let me see your work card. You work here? Yeah, I work at Oh, you the do? Car. Oh, so you're just asking a question and yeah, then you're pissing off. Yeah, I have off. to dip. Yeah, I'm You sorry. greedy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, you gotta remember the question. <laughs> okay, I'm just really excited. Um, how do you, like your confidence is so amazing. My who? Your confidence. Yeah. Like you have the best confidence, confidence ever. Have you ever experienced someone or so, like, how do you deal with people that be like, Spit shut it up, out. be quiet. You're doing too much. How do you deal with like people, like naysayers, I guess I should say? Um, Kelsey, it's funny, because Kelsey will say to me sometimes, I, I deal with a lot of people every day. I deal with important people. I deal with people who run companies. Uh, you know, I, I'm not your average actor who, well, I don't mean that in a bad, uh, in a way like I'm saying it as a pompous, arrogant person, but I, I deal with things differently. If I don't like what someone's saying to me, I will let them know I don't like it. I don't care who you are, right? How powerful you are, how rich you are. I'll tell you, I'll say, dude, that this is just wrong. If you're telling me that, I said, I don't like you either. <laughs> <laughs> but did you turn off my TV? She was like, no, well, then you watched it, good. <laughs> but um, Kelsey says I make a lot of people nervous because of with that confidence. So I don't really get a lot of people saying no to me. There's a clue in this, everybody. <laughs> the more confident you appear to somebody, the less likely they are to say no or not work with you. Because the fact is, if you're confident and you speak your mind, they realize that they can't overpower you with their bullshit, right? Because you'll suss it all out. Um, I've just always been this way. I can't, if I had a formula and I could sell it, <laughs> Tony Robbins I would be, or whatever his name is, you know? Do you all know who that is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I don't want to be him. I want to be myself. <laughs> but I would sell it, and I'd give it to all of you, because then we would rule the world, literally. Yeah. But my advice is just be confident. Don't ne I mean, I've said this before. Never apologize for being you. Ever. And if somebody makes you feel bad about yourself, you have the absolute right, and this is my big, no matter who you are, if you're gay, straight, bi, trans, LGBTQ+, all the different things that we are in this world. If somebody is saying something rude and ignorant to you, you have a damn right to stand up and say something rude and ignorant right back to them because they have no right to say that. And some people won't agree with me on that, but I'm, it's time for us to stop apologizing for who we are and to step right in the front and go, no, you're not going to deny me of that because I'm an individual, I'm a human being, and you're being a dickhead. Thank you so much. I love you. She's like, I'm going to go tell my boss that now. <laughs> Literally, I'm going to tell my coworker just that. <laughs> Thank you, hon. Thank you. Have a good day. Be confident. Yep. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Cody from Burlington, Iowa. Hi, Cody I'm from Burlington, Iowa. I wondered if you could talk a little bit about your experience co-authoring with your sister. For those of you who don't know, my sister and I have written s eight novels together. We've written the Torchwood uh, uh, comics for Titan. We have written a, uh, a comic at the moment which is on Webtoon for Legendary. We also have, well, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag again. Um, <laughs> we're in... 
we've already had it aligned, but we're just trying to work it out. We're going to write some stuff for Big Finish. Oh. <laughs> Oops, that came out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we're working. We we loved it. I love working with my sister because you know if if you have siblings, you know as you grow up at, at certain points, you kind of go a little different direction with because you're finding yourself doing your own thing. But what the books have done for myself and my sister is, is like strengthened our relationship and our our, our our brother and sisterhood, so to speak. And I can tell my sister anything. She'll tell me anything. We still argue. We still are brother and sister, and we know when we've kind of hit that limit and we need to sit down and remove ourselves from the room. You know, it's that kind of thing. So we have a really good relationship. It's actually really worked and it's really healthy. For me, the reason I wanted to write with her, and you know, Carol does the hard work. I help with formulating the stories, doing the outlining, the character uh, building and stuff, and then she goes away and she goes into the closet. I was out many years ago. She's going back in to write. She does it, she does it literally in a closet. I kid you not. <laughs> because she can focus. <laughs> I'm like, don't tell mom and dad that you're in the closet because they'll just be like, okay, well, we knew she was a lesbian. <laughs> so um, it, for me, it was about giving her the opportunity to live her dream because I'm living mine, thanks to you guys. So for me to be able to help her become, and we did with our first book, my book uh, of my autobiography, Anything Goes, it was 13 weeks in the Sunday Times bestseller list in London, and we became, right up, overnight, we became best-selling authors. So my sister's dream came true overnight because of that. So, we love your yeah. If you, uh, can I, I'll show you a little clip later from, if you want, if you remind me, from uh, our new comic with Legendary. Would you like to see it? A hundred percent, yes. Yes, because it stars, it's the first comic that stars John Barrowman. As another character, we're starting to try something of putting actors into the comic books. It's kind of oh, fun, nice. isn't it? Yeah. Nice. A lot like that's been done before. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, over here. I'm sorry I'm pacing, but if I stand too long in these heels, I'm afraid I'm going to oh. fall through the fucking floor. <laughs> yes. Hi, John. It's Hi. Maria from Chicago. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could share with us the ex something about the experience of uh, all-star musicals that you did last week okay. um, in the UK, and why did you decide to do a Mary Poppins medley, and can we see it? <laughs> <laughs> I I, I, apart from doing stuff over here uh, in the US, I still do work in the UK, and I did a, a show called All-Star Musicals, which was a, t a TV show where we had celebrities come in who've never been on stage before doing musicals, and we let them do big musical numbers like from uh, uh, Chicago. Chicago. We did, um, we also did, uh, what was the other, oh my gosh. Funny Girl from, you know, we did, so uh, lots of good big things. And um, um, what's Hairspray? So lots of good numbers. I sang at the beginning, I opened the show with the Mary Poppins medley. The reason I sang it is because I was told to sing it. <laughs> okay. It was a one-off uh, program, but hopefully it'll go to a series. And if you have the, I think there's an app where you get the best of British TV programs. If it did, then hopefully it would go on that app uh, and you can watch it. I'm sure somehow online you can see it. And I'm just gonna point some people out to you. Some of these people down here, right? Who are my posse from the UK who kind of know, they go, they follow me. They're a bit obsessed. But I, but I love them, <laughs> right? They might have a way to help you here see it, right? Oh yeah, Louise has got her thumbs up. Bitch knows everything, <laughs> right? You. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yes, over here. You look fabulous in those heels. And so do you. Why, thank you. What I'm size gonna... shoe do you wear? 11. Okay, get up here, come here. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Are you a heterosexual? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I could tell from your walk. <laughs> Take your shoes off. Only your shoes. <laughs> no, stay seated. I'll show you. Are you going to put them on right? Do you, have you ever worn high heels before? Oh, it's a stupid question, isn't it? <laughs> Here. Okay. And here. 
oh my God, you're a tacky queen. You're wearing socks and high heels. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Woo! Okay, walk it down. Thank you for the music, I love you. What's your name? My name is Tony. Tony. Tony Baloney. <laughs> you were okay with me giving you a little pet there, weren't you? It's totally fine, I can die now. <laughs> Please don't. Um, so, you have a question? Yes. Um, <laughs> so my question was, watching you and- yeah, Sit down, it'll be like Oprah and Gail. I'm Oprah. Okay, fab. Yeah, it's Gorge. They're both Gorge. So, one of my favorite moments, just as a queer man, was seeing the development of your, of Jax and Yanto's relationship develop, and just your freedom in your sexuality, and it was freeing for me as, as a young man growing up and seeing that. Because um, I grew up watching Who With My Dad, and I got to see that happening on my favorite TV show. And I got to see it on torture, and I was just freaking out. So rep that, that was like a moment of representation where I felt free. Was there, is there a moment like that for you from your history, someone who you looked up to and you just admired? That just made me go funny. <laughs> no, 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 I mean that in a good way because the one thing that, that we forget that when we're on television that we actually are affecting people's lives. And I know Russell, if he were here, because I saw Russell about two weeks ago, and he would adore what you have just said because we all grew up uh, in our era, in our generation, we didn't have role models on television that we could look up to because they were all stereotypes. They were all, um, you know, it was either Billy Crystal on soap or it was somebody who was getting beat up, it was somebody who was being called a name, it was somebody who was hiding because of who they were, so there was never really any positive role models and the one thing that when I decided to come out of the closet uh, as an actor and as a professional I was I was prepared that my career would stop right there and then but I was also prepared to make change and to do things like that and thank goodness that uh, um, Russell came along and the Doctor Who team came along and created Captain Jack Harkness and allowed me to be myself also in that role and to help people like yourself change and, and be happy and see that an openly gay man could play a hero on television and be accepted. And I'm sure, I don't, you don't need to go into it, but I'm sure it was also something for your father to see because it was a big thing because it was one of the things that when I came out to my parents and I said to my dad, I'm a man who happens to like men. Now, he said, but what does that, that, that mean? You know, do, don't you, doesn't it mean do you want to become a woman? I said, no, that's something completely different. I said, and as you, you get to know me and you understand me first, then I'll tell you about all the other beautiful things that are within the community that I am part of, that you are now going to be part of. And he was like, my dad, okay. And then he went, can we go to dinner at the club now? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, but I love that. And uh, for me, it was cathartic to do it on television to help people like yourself, so yeah. Thank you so much for all you do. You're welcome. <laughs> now give me my heels back, bitch. <laughs> there, just put them there, thank you. That really was like Oprah and Gail right there, wasn't it? <laughs> thank you. So, um, yes, we're, which side were we on? I'm gonna go both ways today. 
Yes. Hello, my name is James, and I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I got a gal in Kalamazoo. Or a guy in Kalamazoo. That's my mother's favorite song. Is it? Yes. She's a good mom. Mm -hmm. What's your question? If they were to make another musical for Flash and Supergirl, what kind of style would you want it to be? <sighs> Don't tell anybody. I'd like Lynn Manuel to write it. <laughs> However, I don't know if I would be in it because don't ask me to rap. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to, I'd like, sing one of the ballads or something. It would be good oh, yeah. or something, you know, more traditional. I can, maybe I'll give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Hamilton, I love, right? Mm. But you do not want to be in the car with me when I'm singing Hamilton. Uh. No, you don't! Uh. Shut up! Yeah, so I think in the style, in the style of Hamilton, because... Uh, Colin Donnell and I were having a conversation, Kelsey, we were all having dinner last night, and Colin was privileged enough to be at the kind of r preview of Hamilton when it was still in the working stages, and he said he left knowing that musical theater was about to change. And he had seen something that in the 70s, that when I heard Stephen Sondheim, mm -hmm. thank you, who at the dinner table, Kelsey and Taryn went, who's that? Colin and I went, ah! <laughs> right? So musical theater has now t turned another page. So yeah, Lynn manuel uh, Thank you very Welcome. much. Welcome. Yes, over here. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, Megan from Milwaukee. Um, I was just wondering if you could talk Milwaukee, about Megan. <laughs> Milwaukee, Megan. It's an alliteration. <laughs> I love it. I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about um, how you came to be an American actor working so often in the UK because a lot of times, especially in TV, I'll see like British. I have an autobiography you can read. <laughs> um, how did I come to be that? Yeah. I was actually born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland, and I am fortunate enough that I, I my family, what? <laughs> Pay me. What do I look like, a pole dancer? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland. My family moved to uh, Aurora, Illinois to begin with, and my dad was moved by Caterpillar Tractor Company. And we then, uh, I was, you know, grew, grew, I went to Washington Junior High School in Aurora. I went to Joliet West High School in Joliet. Um, so I, I'm, you know, firm roots here. The reason I am able to work in both countries is because my father never, we're, where you're born, you don't give up your passport. However, we became American citizens because we wanted to be Americans. And uh, I'm privileged that I have two passports, which allows me to work in both countries and also have the citizenship of two countries. I can vote in both countries. I pay taxes in both countries. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I do. I, and I also pay worldwide tax to have that privilege. So I pay three times. <laughs> but I'm happy to, right? So, um, uh, I, yeah, so that's how that came about. And I went back to the UK in 1989 to study Shakespeare. And I went to an open call audition for a show called Anything Goes with a woman named Elaine Page, and I got the lead role in that, and my career hasn't stopped Touchwood since. <laughs> By the way, you know, if you like this kind of thing, seriously, read my autobiography. It's really funny. And, if, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be sitting like on, I heard someone on a plane reading it once, and they were told to be quiet. <laughs> they were laughing so hard. Yeah. Thank you. That was me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, and by the way, when I'm at home and I'm with my mum and dad, my brother and my sister, I speak Scottish, I don't speak American. Are you happy? 
Uh, hi, I'm Caspian. I'm hi, Chicago. Caspian. Um, I've sailed on your sea. <laughs> and um, I, I saw you. Caspian's like, uh, I'm just going to go right over that. <laughs> yes, I am. Go uh, ahead. I saw you at Denver Comic Con last year. Uh -huh. um, I heard you sing I Am What I Am, uh -huh. and that actually made my entire year really? right in that moment. Um, I wanted to well, ask, you better get ready because there's another moment going to happen later in this panel. Awesome. Um, and I wanted to ask you is, um, how did you first get into singing? How did I first get into singing? When I was four or five years old, I used to, I used, first of all, my mother worked in a record store in, in a place called Shettleston in, outside of Glasgow. And when I was a little boy, in those days, you could go from school and I could get on a bus and when I got on the bus, there'd be Mrs. Uh, Thompson from up the street who'd sit on the bus and she'd like, John, come stand next to me. I know you're going to your mom's or you're going to your grand's. People would look after other people's kids and families. And I grew up in that. And so I'd get on the bus knowing that I was safe. And I would go all the way up to the record store and I'd get into the record store after school. And my mother would pick me up at the age of five, six onto the countertop and sit me on the counter. People would come in and they would say to me, sing the top five hits, John. I'd stand up and I would sing, Millie Molly Mandy, sweet as sugar candy, pretty little eyes of blue. Everybody would be if they only could be walking out with you. Totally gay. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's how I started. I'm not done yet, Caspian. I thought you were. Sorry. No. Wait for the line at the end. No, I'm kidding. I am done. You're all right. <laughs> yes. So I actually got to see you last year with my mom at Heroes and Villains. Good. And because of you, I got her to watch Doctor Who. Awesome. And so one of my favorite things you've ever said is never apologize for being nerdy because unnerdy people never apologize for being a-holes. Being what? A-holes. Ankles? Assholes. Assholes. You can yeah. say it. <laughs> Jesus, I've said fuck 20 times in this room. One asshole isn't going to hurt anybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like insanely nervous. Go ahead. You don't like to swear. That's okay. Um, I'll do the fucking swearing for you. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and <laughs> hey, before you think about what you're saying, Pikachu, deflate a little so the people behind you can see. I love you, but I'm not playing fucking Pokemon right now, okay? <laughs> and those people behind you are getting pissed off. Deflate. I'll make sure you, I'll, I'll inflate you when you get up to the microphone, okay? Um, and because that quote holds a lot um, of meaning to me, I was wondering, like, because you're right, my role model. Who was your role model that kind of showed you it was okay to be a nerd and it was not bad? Um... It was more the things I played with. Don't. <laughs> you in the back, you're a dirty bastard. Um, and I say that meaning, and I, we talked about this the other day in a panel that we had. I would go into the basement with my best friend, Ross. Uh, um, no. <laughs> He's still my mate. I know him, I know his wife, and I know his kids. No. Although I wouldn't have minded when I was younger. Anyway, um, but Ross, uh, we used to go and play in his basement or my basement, and we would hide playing with our action figures, our, uh, uh, our six-inch Mego superheroes. And six-inch, sorry. Was it six-inch? You're just loving me saying six inches. <laughs> well, tell you what, I have a six-inch action figure, a nine-inch, 12-inch, and a 15, and guess what one I like the best? I play with myself all the time. Um, <laughs> double entendre. Uh, so we would go in the basement and hide and play with the action figures, but they were my role models. They were my heroes because I would go down to the A&P in the drugstore next to the A&P on a Thursday and I would spin the rack and I would choose the comic books that I would read because the people in those comic books were like me. They were different. They were shunned. They were trying to do good. 
They were trying to be themselves with the, the hand that they had been dealt, and they were understanding who they were. So for me, it was learning through the comics. I'm getting all goosebumps. That's why, for me, it's important to let other people know that to be a nerd, that, you know, some people watch superhero shows just for the fun and the, the explosions and the villains and everything. Great. Other people watch it for different reasons. It affected me differently, and that's, those who my, were my role models in that aspect of knowing that I was a nerd and a geek and I could be proud of it. Uh, John, uh, quickly before we have, uh, I just have one question. Oh my God! If you had to pick one favorite TV son of yours, who would it be? I heard this voice, I'm like, it's God. <laughs> I've had a defining moment. Um, John, your Everybody, call him Donna! Um, you're almost as tall as me now. You're tall and damn. Yeah. Because I have has yeah. nothing to do with the heels. Hey, those are beautiful, hey, by the um, way. Wait there. <laughs> did anything that John Barrowman ever did turn out good when he said "wait there"? In the words of "Into the Woods," <laughs> like father, like son. <laughs> hey. I mean, I, why not? I'm a good dad. I always travel with extras. <laughs> Are you going to do know, it? You know, I have a father, I have a deadbeat dad in some cases, but I only have one daddy. <laughs> and who might that be? <laughs> You're actually going to do it. I'm going to do it. Of course I'm going to do it. I'm going to... I can't wait for this. I'm going to stand Are the paramedics here. standing by? Yeah. Do we have paramedics standing by just no. in case? I'm gonna be like a. Are you gonna? Are you? Hey, test card. Are you gonna hit? That's that's what we call that in Britain. Test card. Um, are you gonna hit it, some music? <laughs> Give us something really gay. Because this is this is as a dad. This is my defining moment. <laughs> my son is coming out. I have to be honest, John. This is the very first time that I've ever put on heels, and I did the first reading of Kinky Boots the musical. Well, it's a good thing that nobody's here to witness it. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I, I feel like a baby fawn. Don't look at me, look at him. This is his moment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the way. Here, How am I doing? Here? I do like it. <laughs> coming out. Oh, no, literally, I'm coming out. They're comfortable, aren't it's they? Totally comfortable. Okay, Ready? Ready? I love Can this. you do? He just said to me, I almost fell in the hole. I'm like, story of my life. Oh awesome. my goodness, wow. Uh, you know what? I have a new respect for all women. <laughs> because holy shit. Yes. How do you do this? I know, I have two broken toes. Although I have to say, I feel like my calves look really good right now. They do. <laughs> and they make your ass look really good too. I mean, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Kelsey, send this video to his wife. Send it to Patty. It already happened, didn't it? Yep, it's already gone. Yeah. I have changed him. I have changed. Well, you can well, have them. Thank you, John. I'm going to take my All boots. Right. I have no need for these anymore, apparently. No, just go ahead. I'll see you down at the table. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. A big round of applause for Colin, everyone. <laughs> you know what I love? Even though he can walk in them, he still walks like a guy. That's my boy! <laughs> Who is next? Yes, over there. Hello, TARDIS. I love Hi. your dress. I love your outfit. Thank you. I've been in you. <laughs> right? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're bigger on the inside. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> yes. So my name is Hannah. I'm from 
sandwich. Sandwich. Yeah, sandwich. Not, not sandwich. 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 Yes. <gasps> Do you want to know a story about sandwich? The sandwich fair. Yes, I love okay? it. Okay. Does it still go on? Yes. Okay. The sandwich fair. Oh, I should have known I was gay at that time. I did know, but I just didn't say anything. I was like 11 years old. I'd just done a show at the Rialto, not the Rialto, the, um, uh, the Paramount Arts Theater in Aurora. Yeah, and I, Caterpillar took it over and did a show every year, and I, was, I played the flute. I played Annie's song on my flute. I'm still playing the flute today, but a very different kind. Um, <laughs> stick with me, people. I know it's getting late. I know it's getting late. Um, and this girl who came out with a dog and sang, the sun will come out tomorrow. I fell in love with her. <laughs> and I called her my girlfriend. And I used to call her every night at 7 o'clock till about 7.30. And she lived in Sandwich. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Was never going to see her again, but <laughs> she was my girlfriend. I think I liked her because she was a little orphan Annie. I wanted the red dress and the wig. That, that was sense. it. That makes was sense. it. Yeah. Sorry, I digressed. <laughs> She's like, uh huh. Can I ask a fucking <laughs> question now? <laughs> Go ahead. So we all know kind of what your favorite character that you've played has been. Do you? I'm assuming it's Jack. Harkness. Don't assume, because when you assume, you make an ass, ass out, out of, of you, you and me. me. <laughs> <laughs> so who would you think my favorite character is? Because you might be wrong. I was kind of thinking it was Jack Harkness. Well, you might think that, but you might be wrong. Ooh, controversy. <laughs> no, because I never answer favorite questions, because each of the characters have changed my life in a different way. But go ahead and ask your question. What's your husband's favorite character that you've played? <laughs> it's a more exciting question. Yeah, I play a Tom of Finland character on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Only certain people got that. I'm, I play another superhero on a Friday and Saturday, and he's called Leatherman. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Scott plays one, it's called Slingshot. No, anyway, um. <laughs> I think Scott, uh, to be honest with you, Scott, um, and Kelsey can vouch for this. If I, six minutes, if I say to Scott, um, you know, about favorite characters, Scott doesn't always watch me on TV, does he? No. <laughs> he, 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 I have to sit him down. I love watching myself on television. <laughs> and I make him sit with me and watch it, but I think that he knows what the characters mean to me, and there's certain things, he, uh, funny enough, Scott likes it when he sees me performing. He loves watching me live on stage, because there's certain things I do that he just giggles, and one of them is, yeah. <laughs> I can do that anywhere with him, and he will lose it. <laughs> On a plane, in a restaurant, like, they'll be in a, we'll be in a flight, and they'll come up and they go, Mr. Gill, can I take your order? Would you like the chicken or fish? And I'll go, yeah, and he'll just lose it. <laughs> so, but, yeah, but he appreciates, you know, how favorite characters are. Like Captain Jack Harkness. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I have six minutes left. I'm going to do two more questions, and I'm going to sing you a song. Is that OK? <laughs> and then when I'm done, if you just run the trailer for uh, um, the comic book, which is available, it's free, everybody, if you download Webtoon, OK? It's free, and it's starring me. Yes. Hi, my name's Garrett, and I'm from Montgomery, so I love all these local stories. Yeah, and you're cold. Thank you. And before I get to my question, I apologize. My hair's grown out a little bit since Wizard World. Okay. And um, my question is, unfortunately, Arrow season will be its last yes. next season. So we've been kind of hitting a lot of spoilers this uh, panel. Has anybody been hitting up your phone for the last season of Arrow? Nope. <sighs> Start hitting up the keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if they asked me to go back, of course I'd love to go back. Yeah, I would definitely love to go back, but who knows where that story is going to go and the journey is going to go. So we just have to wait and see. Yeah, would you like to see Malcolm back? Of course. I mean, he died in an explosion, and his name's the. He's magician. in an alternate reality. That's what I like to think, and he's trying to get out. I just think. And he's, he's going to kill somebody to get out. He really is, and then he's going to be back and like, I am here to fuck it all up. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, last one over here, my dear. Make it a good one, no pressure. You're the last question. Um, my name's Hazel, I'm from Chicago. Hi. Um, I just really wanted to actually thank you yeah. for being you. Um, I've been through a lot when I was younger um, with teasing and stuff like that, so um, just you being who you are on screen and everything, yeah. it's really meant a lot. Awesome. Just to see you be who you are and not worry about what other people think. So but do you stand you. up for yourself now? Yeah. Good. It's a lot easier. Good. Tell them to fuck off. You got it. It's the easiest. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetheart. I'll just do one last one and then I'll sing. I've heard a rumor that uh, you and Billy Piper refer to David Tennant as David Tenninch. I wanted to know if there was any story behind that you'd like to share. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like my father-in-law. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, this is a, a song, I, I don't know if I've sung this one for you before. It's on my most current album. Uh, it's called A Thousand Years. And it's, uh, for me, it's about equality. It's about finding the right person. And uh, no one should tell you who you should love. And when we went to get married, Scott and I, at the registrar's office in Palm Springs, there was about 50 to 100 people standing there. And they were all in their 70s and 80s. And one gentleman came up to us. I'm shortening this up. Came up to us and said, you know, thank you for being who you are. Scott and I got married because it wasn't hard to get to the front of the line with people being in their 70s and 80s. We were, <laughs> we're married. So they were like, would you stand up for us? And would you witness our weddings, and so we did. And one gentleman said to us, he said, I never thought I'd be alive to see the day that I would be able to celebrate at 82, the love for my now husband, Tom, age 78, because we don't have any family left. But to have our family, I said, well, we're your family, and we're re representing this now. So I recorded this song because no one should tell you who you should love. No one should tell you how long it's going to take you to find that love because everybody will, even if it takes you a thousand years. Hit it. Heart. One step closer One step closer 
Thank you very much. Enjoy the trailer. Is Charlie Stewart. I am the Accursian. A world of Celtic myth and Scottish magic have crashed into my life. And now every move I make ends in disaster. My job, my wife, my son, my world, even reality itself, all in danger unless I find a way to reverse this ancient curse. <laughs> and you thought your family was f***ed up.